Hello, Salesforce enthusiasts. Relatively simple one today, uh, and this how-to will provide you with the foundation to generate a URL-driven uh, report on any of your object's uh, record pages. Uh, we'll use the account for today's example, uh, and we'll create a button so when you click the button, you actually get uh, a report of activities on that given account. So uh, by implementing this awesome feature, you can remove the activities component from your page layout uh, which will improve your record's load time. And the cool thing about this is that you can replicate the how-to for your contacts object, your leads object, and uh, given it's a native uh, Salesforce report, you can actually export it to Excel and send it to colleagues that don't necessarily have access to your Salesforce org. All right, enough talk, let's CRM. Here's what we'll be achieving today. So I'll show you uh, the end result. If I go to a specific account, uh, here I am. The account has activities on it. Uh, notice this activity report button. And once you click on it, it essentially filters out activities for that specific account. Uh, we're going to include a nice little chart on it. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll be building today. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm logged into my dev instance here. And ultimately, what we want to work on today is uh, for a, any given account, we'll be adding a button to these uh, to this button set up here uh, to generate an activity report for activities on uh, on the account. So the first thing we'll need to do is uh, go to the reports tab and we'll create a new report. Now here for the categories, uh, in order to uh, essentially narrow down this list of report types, I'm going to click on activity. And the report type that we want to use here is activities with accounts. So go ahead and select that and click on your start report button here to the right. Now, we're in the Reports Builder. We're going to play around uh, for the fields to display or the columns to display in the Outline tab. And then we're going to filter, uh, put a filter criteria so that it filters on the actual account that we're on. So the columns we'll want to add here are uh, account name. We'll group rows by account name. So go ahead and drag account name to the top here under group rows. And for the columns, we want the date. We want the subject, which is already there. And we want full comments. So go ahead and insert these three fields here. Um, I'm going to grab subject and move it below date. Uh, sometimes it's a little finicky. But you can use your patience and try to get that in there. So now we have date, subject, and full comments. Now up here, we are going to add a row level formula. And that is uh, because task subtype and event subtype are in different objects uh, in, in your Salesforce instance. So we have to write a formula to say, hey, if uh, the task subtype is, is blank or is null, uh, show me the event subtype and vice versa. Uh, if event subtype is null, uh, show me task subtype. So there's, there's always one of the two columns that are filled out. We just want to pull the actual value that's filled in. So in order to do a row level formula, first we'll have to build it in the columns down here. So go ahead and click that little down arrow and add row level formula. And here I'm going to call this column activity. Uh, just a description displays activity type, uh, i.e. meeting call, event, etc. The formula output type is going to be of type text. 
And then here, and I'll, I'll include uh, this formula in the comments, but what we want to do is if open paren is blank, which is essentially the same as if the field is null. Uh, so which field, if which field is blank, we want task subtype. So select task subtype on the left in the fields and click on insert. So then if task subtype is blank, we want to show the event subtype. So go ahead and select event subtype, insert. And then if it is not blank, then show me task subtype. So go back to task subtype. Uh, this is your classic uh, if statement uh, in the Salesforce way. So once you have this formula, go ahead and click validate. It's valid. We're going to apply it. And then uh, so we have our formula for activity. Uh, what we want to do is drag it up to uh, right below account name up here. Let's go ahead and save this report here. And I'm going to call it activities on accounts. Um, I like to delete this API name, go back and then tab out of it so it actually reflects what it is. And then this uh, displays. And you'll want to select a folder that is publicly available. So go ahead and wherever your public reports are stored, obviously it has to be in a public accessible folder for your users to be able to access it. So select it and save it. Okay, so now it's pulling up pretty much all activities depend, you know, regardless of whatever account it's on. Uh, but we're done with the outline tab. What we want now is to filter uh, essentially uh, on the account that we're on. And there's a special trick for URL driven reports and this is where we'll get into it. So show me, I want all activity here. So go ahead and click on my team's activities, which is a Salesforce default and select all activities. Click on done. Date, I want all time. So go ahead in the range and select all time, apply. Open activities, I want all activities. So I'm gonna select open and completed activities, apply, show tasks and events. And then we want to add a filter here. And this is where the little trick uh, comes in. So we want our account ID, this one down here, equals blank value. We're going to pass it the account ID from whichever account record we're generating or launching this, uh, this report from. So account ID equals, don't put anything in here, and select apply and you'll see that it'll say equals blank essentially and we are going to save it there we go uh you know what i don't want subtotals on here so i'm gonna uncheck this option grand totals fine detail rows are are needed um so i'm gonna go ahead and save this again so now we have uh the bare bones of our report. We can run it if we want. Again, it won't show anything because I'm showing account where account ID equals blank. Um, but what you want to do at this point is go into the URL. And let me just pull it up here. Okay, I just displayed my URL here. So what you want to do here is um, grab the URL of your, the report that we've just built. So go ahead, select it and uh, select copy. And now what we'll do is we'll build, 
if you want to go to account, um, we'll build the button that will call that report. So if you want to go to an account, uh, pull one up and then go to the cogwheel setup and select edit object. Here in the object, we'll want to go to buttons, links, and actions. And we want to create a new button or link. And we'll fill in the details here. So the URL that you pasted, you can just go ahead and paste it in here for now uh, in the um, URL field up for the label. This is what the button is going to be called. I want my button to be called activity report, tab out, put it in description, launches report of activities for current account. We want it to be a detailed page button. We want it to display in a new window of type URL. And here's where the magic happens. So here we're calling our report, but what we need to do here is pass it the account ID that we're currently on. So the way to do that is adding a question mark at the end of the URL that you pasted, put in FV, Frank Victor zero equals and then within curly brackets we want to put um, exclamation point account ID which is the API field of the account ID so let me explain this a little bit what FV zero is um, it's we're passing it a variable FV zero essentially equates to, and you don't have to navigate here, just take a look at this. So if I go active, uh, back to our report and I go to edit and I go to my filters, this is FV0. So it'll call this report and it'll pass the account ID in FV0, which is this guy right here. If I had multiple variables on the report, um, the next one would be F v1 and f v2 and so on and so on um, so you get the gist of it let me go back home here so right now we're just passing it f v0 equals account id uh, we can check the syntax no errors that's good we want to save it and then we have our button the next step is to go to your page layout uh, go to your account layout and we want to add that button to our uh, our page layout essentially so what we'll do up here is we'll go to um, buttons right up here we see that our activity report button is here I'm gonna drag it click and drag it down to custom buttons here it is I'm going to save it and I'm going to go back to uh, my account. So here I have an account that has four activity types, right? So I've got a, I've got a log call, I've got a task, I've got an email, and I've got a calendar event. Now, uh, if I refresh this, if you're using enhanced pages, you won't necessarily see the button appear right away. Uh, so what we need to do here is go and edit the actual page while we're on the account. And then once this loads, go ahead and select this uh, upper highlights panel section. And over here, I'm going to uh, see how I, ha how I have three buttons visible right here. So I have generate PDF, new task, and new event. I'm going to display four and uh, I'm going to add a button. So if you scroll down, you want to click, excuse me, click on add action, click
click on the search actions and you'll see under custom actions here your activity report. Select it, click on done, move it all the way to the top so it'll be the first button to show after follow. Here it is. I'm going to save it and go back. It should now appear on my account record, sure enough. And that's it. Before we launch this activity report, uh, if you could do me a favor and uh, subscribe to the channel and like this video, uh, this helps the algorithm to, you know, push this video up and, and push it to more Salesforce enthusiasts, enthusiasts such as yourself. Um, so I would really appreciate it. Click that like and subscribe button. All right, let's go into the activity report. And here's your activity report for the account Nichols134. Here's a little bonus that we'll do. So we'll go ahead and add a chart and click this little cogwheel, leave it in bar. The X, I'm sorry, the Y axis is going to be activity and not account name. And then I'm going to brand it, select the eyedrop tool, grab a color. Here we go. Um, the last thing we want to do is click on edit and go to filters and notice that the account ID was pre-filled here. Let's click on it, get rid of this, hit apply, save it. Okay, that was saved. Now if we go back to our accounts, do I have anything under Abbott? No. We go back to accounts, select our Nichols account and activity report. We should now have a nice little chart that breaks down the count of activities for this specific account. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, we do these once in a while, we release them on Thursdays. Uh, if you have any suggestions, feel free to comment and let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, we can get into flows, we can get into additional configuration. Uh, we can also get into Marketing Cloud if you wish. So uh, just leave me a comment, let me know what you think and what you'd like to see uh, on our next video. Thanks for watching and have yourself an amazing day. Thank you.